give God a hand clap of praise because he's been so good to me. Hallelujah. It's good to be here. Amen. Amen. I want everybody in the house, all of our children and youth, I want you to just stop right now and I want you to, I want you to stop right now. How's my baby right here? How old is the baby? Brother Tim, no, no, Tim, 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 how old is she? He, or how old is he? He's six years old. Amen. He's not going to be still. He's six or seven. How do you, how do you, buddy? Six, six years old. Twins. What, what's your name? Six. All right. And your brother? Excellent. Thank you. So he talks for you all the time? Does he talk for you all the time? Jadon. Does he pretty much talk for you? Not all the time, but sometimes. Okay, very good. Let's stop and give God some praise. When I say give God some praise, I want you to clap your hands for God. Stop right now. Clap your hands. Hold on. Let's, shh, glory to God. We're going to start over again. Amen? Right here for a second. Get you up. I want you to stop. Just uh, stay right where you are. Stay where you are. Now, when I say give God some praise, we got, it's just like God just scored a touchdown for you. So let's give God some praise. Now, with so, those same two hands, I want you to put them together. Put them together. Bow your head. Close your eyes. And what we're going to do right now is pray. Hold on for a second. I got somebody who's not listening to me. Amen. Let's pray. To the most wise and holy God, we exalt you. We magnify you, declaring that you're God. We thank you, Father God, for our children and youth that are here tonight. We pray right now, Father, that you will indeed instill them with your spirit. We pray, Father God, a peace upon them, and not just them, but their mom, their dad, their sisters, their brothers, their school, and everything around them. We pray that you keep them safe. Provide for them food, clothing, shelter, security. Let them belong, Father God. We're praying that you indeed provide the basic needs for them and help us to be examples for them in peace and in love that father god that three summers from now they'll be absolutely reach the age of majority they'll be grown just about and for the little ones lord god i'm praying that the larger ones be an example for them i pray right now father god that you forgive me for my sins and forgive us for our sins for being so negligent in being the sons and the daughters you've called us to be but we thank you father god for an opportunity just to be able to praise you. Because if it had not been for you, we would not, would, not have, would not be here. We would not have gotten up this morning. We would not have the activity of our limbs. And things would not be as well as it is. I pray right now for the Fairfield Fellowship, this church, Lord God, that you allowed to be established in the late 1800s. A few faithful folk. Few, a few faithful people got together and named this fellowship, Fairfield, by your direction. And somehow, Lord God, a hundred and plus years later, you've allowed it to continue. So we thank you for them. And also, Lord God, we thank you in advance for what you're about to do. Lord God, speak to us and make it plain that our children and our saints, senior saints alike, Lord God, will be able to get a word from you. So it's in Jesus' name we ask you to focus us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Oh, you're going to make me do it again. Amen. 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 Right here. Right here. I got somebody not with me. Young ladies. Young ladies. Young ladies. Right here. Baby girls. Baby girls. Right. Go we'll give God some praise again. We're waiting on you all. We're going to ask you to praise God again. Amen. Right there. Praise God again. Hallelujah. Somewhere in the word. Somewhere, somewhere in the word, my beloved, I began to read. And it said, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. So that means a lot of things to me. That means that that if we're coming to worship, we should be in place to worship. And if we're not in place to worship, then my prayer is that God will send what we need. And that we'll go into the highways and byways and indeed compel them to come. So I thank God for those that God has called to be here. But God has indeed established his church. He said, upon this rock I should build my, my, my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So we thank God for what he has done and what he's about to do. So. Sure. There was a word from the Lord today, and a uh, little preacher. Uh, progress reports come out on Monday. Amen? 
How do you know I'm a, pre, I'm a principal? You got a hard day today? Quit it on him. Quit, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Everybody, everybody going to go to heaven or hell on their own. Amen. 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 So we're going to we're going to get it together. We're going to talk about today a piece of encouragement we're going to talk about. Look, and you're all going to take notes just like off, off times in your teaching that I don't have a PowerPoint for you. You're not going to see it. You're going to have to hear it and write it, and you're going to have to write it the best way you can. Amen? Amen. So the title of the message and the, and the encouragement tonight, and, and Doc Brooks, good to see you. God bless you. These are your babies or future babies if you hang out at Maplewood just a little while longer. Amen. A few more days. And we run them down the corridors of your hallway. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Mm, no, ma'am. I, I'm, I'll teach you. Y'all, we can all hang in and be cuddly. This might be my choir next week. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hey, in fact, we're going to sing a little. Hey, hold on a second. You can take, you can take this disrespectful one back. Preach it. Preach a man. Preach a man. Preach a man. Touch him on his leg. You can go to the door. You can go to the door. Go get some food and some water. Amen. Come up. Go. Thank you. I, I'm an old teacher. And uh, in teaching Doc Brooks, one thing for sure, no one. Can you imagine somebody going to sleep in my class? They never did. Never did. I could tell you a little story one that was kind of interesting. I was a teacher at MLK, and I worked them. I worked them. I worked them hard. Just a minute. Hold your question. And uh, I told them I, I ran everything in that room from the rats, rats and the roaches. Did what I said do. <laughs> I was a history teacher, and I must tell you, I must tell you, two things that came into my mind. One. They said they wanted, a, a, they wanted a democratic process in the room, and I told them that a better form of government that moves quickly is a, is a dictatorship. And so I let them cool pull together. I said, now, if you want a democratic process, I let you, I did a nice little lesson to do a democratic process, and I overthrew the government <laughs> and became the dictator in that classroom. Some of the, some of the kids understood it in the, in the front. But listen for a second. That was a, uh, are you good, baby? What you need? You good? You good? Amen. What school you go to? What school you go to? Rocket ship? All right. Charter school. We need our own charter school. All right. Here we go. Here's the title of the message. Oh, I tell you what. I was, I was, I was bragging one time. I said, I run this room. I do rat. I, I, I control the rats and the roaches. I was teaching at MLK. And at that time, before they really, really remodeled it, a rat ran into the room mouse and as fate would have it I stopped and looked at the mouse he stopped rose up looked at me turned around and ran out of the door because the kids were so afraid of me they would do it they just said <gasps> and then the rat said <gasps> and ran out they fell out laughing they said Mr. Jones ain't having it and I'm not having it today amen amen let's give God some praise one more time Give God some praise. Praise God. Give God some praise one more time. Amen. What you need? You just wanted to come up here? What happened? The baby, your twin? All right, just go have a seat. You're going to be all right, okay? I promise you. I like your hair. All right? All right, have a seat. I got him. And he's already said, like, I'm going to tell it. I'm going to get it. Three point, I mean, we're going to hear four points today, okay? We're going to talk about resolve. Say resolve. resolve. We're going to talk about resilience. resilience. And we're going to talk about reflection. Reflection. And we're going to talk about reliance. reliance. Amen. So all this is going to be really talking about redeem. Okay, have a seat for a second. I got you. Amen? All right. All right. So, um, <laughs> remember the child six. Maybe first, two, second, I don't know, just new to church. But so we're going to train them up. Amen? Watch it for a second. Listen. The four points, again, we're going to talk about resolve, resilience, reflection, and reliance. And all of it is talking about the redeemed. I'm going to tell you about the redeemed very quickly. The redeemed are those persons who have allowed themselves to be really purchased back by God 
through Jesus. Let me tell you how he did it. Jesus actually died and paid the cost for us. And so because of that, because of what Christ has already done for us, when we're in the midst of a crisis, psst, 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 psst. Now, don't holler. I got him. I promise you. Uh, I got him. I got him. I got him. I promise you I got him. In the name of Jesus. If y'all let me get him, I got him. All right? Promise you. All right? Y'all got it? If y'all got it, got, if y'all got it, when I say got it, got it? Got Good. Watch here. Watch here for a second. Listen. We're talking about redeemed. And for those that are redeemed, anybody redeemed in this house? Has anybody been redeemed? Because see, if you're redeemed, you ought to show some sign. If you believe in Christ and you've submitted to Christ and God has indeed allowed you to come back in and he's purchased you with this price and I received it, you ought to be redeemed. So in the midst of being redeemed, there ought to be some kind of responses to that. And the first response ought to be, I've got to resolve. What are you talking about? I, I don't have any more confusion about where I am. I'm resolved. Listen to this for a second. In Joshua, the 24th chapter, and if you want to put these scriptures on, on the board, you can. If you can flow faster as I, I can, because I'm going to move pretty fast today. Joshua 24, 15 says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. All I'm asking in our redemption, let us resolve that. Either be cold or hot. Either be here worshiping or not. But today, we need to make a decision. Because the world is crazy out there. Are you hearing me? These children need to absolutely know a person that's resolved and have been, been look, giving it all over to God, period. I'm telling you something because God is who he is and all that he's given. And I believe God. I believe that he woke me up this morning. We're talking about the 24th chapter and the 15th verse. Just it. But you got, yeah, you got it. Okay, good. So I, I resolved in my mind that for God, I'll live. For God, I'll die. But, but pastor, what if everybody else is doing other stuff? The whole world could go to the hot place. Are you hearing me? It really doesn't matter. But what if you're the only one worshiping? Then if that be the case, God has been too good for me not to worship him. Oh, yeah, I wish I had half a church up in here. That, that if God is good for you and if God has made a way for you, if you believe that Jesus is Lord, then somewhere along the way, you ought to be resolved to quit, quit weeping and crying over spilled milk. Quit weeping and crying over folk, my beloved, that really doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter, my beloved, about what, a folk, what other folk think about you. But it does matter about what you think about yourself. I shared with some kids today, I was doing some data, some data talks. Dr. Brooks, doing some data talks, and I, I found over and over again, children would come to my office, and I was doing it one at a time with them, and I was taking them through the three benchmarks, and I was sharing with them what their, their quarter grades were, and uh, was and. and and their attendance, I was just sharing with them, but they would come into my office and say, my grades are bad. I would ask them, you're going to have to sit up straight because you're knocking the lights off, preacher man. Preacher man, you got to sit up straight, big pippin. Listen, I'm way back there with you, aren't I? Isn't that bad? I said, Pastor, way up in the pulpit, now you way back there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if you're not careful, if I'm not resolved for God, then I'll, I'll fall for anything. So, and then I got to believe it. So when I was talking to the children, they would come into my office and me say, my grades are bad. I said, what's your GPA? I don't know. What's your GPA? These are ninth graders. And I showed them how they were making progress on the, on the, on the benchmark. I said, no one has ever talked to you about this. I said, no, 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 no. I said, but let me show you how these grades have indeed, how you've been really progressing towards learning and getting it so you have a greater possibility because next week, they, third graders and above, I think will be taking what is called the end of course test. So we've got to be resolved also to pour into them. But if you have nothing to pour into them, you have nothing to give. But if God has been a blessing to you, you can be a blessing to others. And I've discovered something in that resolve. Brother Manny, I've discovered that if I pour into other folks, God is going to pour back into me. That if I pour joy into you, God is going to pour back into me. If I pull you and bring your attention back to him, because see, I know when attention spans are gone because you're somewhere else, but I see it and can bring you back. you got to be resolved that you're from above and not from beneath. That you're the head, not the tail. That you're not just some Negro coon shine a ham bone. Wish I had half a church. That this church is not some fly-by-night church. 
that we share the word of God, we believe the word of God, we're going to grow in the word of God, and God is going to be, be happy about us. Because he said, upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Am I preaching to myself? Perhaps I am. That, that I believe that this rock, this foundation, Philip, that we're on is, the, is a solid foundation. And, and it ought to dictate to everything else I do. What if I'm sad? I'm still going to be resolved that I got joy. What if, what, if, what, if, what if my friends and family seek to die? I'm still going to rejoice and have a resolve that once absent from the body, present with the Lord. I'm going to be resolved that all things are working toward the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I'm resolved to hear God say, well done, good and perfect servant. Good, perfect, because he may be perfect. Are you, I'm saying perfect, whole in him. Amen? Listen, listen, listen. We got to have a firm resolve. Anybody got a firm resolve? Oh, y'all ain't here, y'all ain't with me. See, the world needs to know that today. Have you ever walked in some place and some folks said, you thank you all that? I, I got to, I, 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 sis, Lord, I got to tell them that it's not that I think about it. It's like riding a bicycle. Y'all don't understand what I just said. When you ride a bicycle, you don't think about it. You know it. When you get in the car today, you're not going to think about, well, how can I turn this car? It's about knowing who you are and whose you are. And it's a confidence. It's not a, a, some kind of pretense. It's not an arrogance. Arrogance means as a pretense. That's what the word means. But when you have a resolve, you got a made up mind. I'm telling you that I'm going to preach. I'm going to share. I'm going to shout. I'm going to cry. I'm going to holler. I'm going to say, thank you, Jesus. If there are two folk in here, if there are 10,000 folk in here, I'm going to shout, thank God, and have the same resolve that for God I live and for God I die. And, and not only that, my beloved, in, in our redemption, I got to ask one more time. How many folk in here have been redeemed? All right, I, I, got, I, I had to ask a question. So, so not only should you have a resolve, you should also have a resilience. Are you with me? I, I've come to find out, my beloved, you can't come in here and be a part of leadership or be a part of any ministry if you don't have, first of all, a redeemed, a redeemed heart mind. And that redeemed heart mind ought to bring you to a resolve. And then not only should you have a resolve, you should also have some resilience. Said, said, talk to me, pastor. Said, talk to me, pastor. So resilience, resilience. Do I need to spell resilience? Okay, very good. It's R-E-S-I-L-I-E-N-C-E. I I give God some praise because he asked. I hope I spelled that right. <laughs> Resilience. Amen. Let's look at the scripture. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 8 and 9. Amen. So this is what we've got to give our children. They've got to be resolved that we're going to win, that I'm going to live and not die. Amen. Sister, you're going to live and not die. I don't care what the whole world's doing, but because God is sitting right here telling you that you're going to live and not die. Got it? That you're going to be prosperous. Got it? You got to have that in your mind. You got to get up. And when you don't feel like making it, you ought to sing the song. I am redeemed. I've been bought with a price. Listen. Resilience. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse eight. Verse eight and nine. Verse eight says this. Verse eight says this. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Oh, I need somebody to understand this today. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Somebody should have hollered right there. All of us have gone through some tough times in life. All of us, my beloved, surely you're either sitting right now in the middle of a storm, on your way out of a storm, or you are indeed headed to a storm whether you know it or not. But in the midst of all of that, you got a shelter from, from the storms. And you got a savior. You got somebody that's going to help you. And but sometimes God has to allow us to go through something to get to something. Am I teaching a little bit? So the resilience is that though I've been pressed, I got a testimony. Though I've got some tough times, I still got joy. Though sometimes it looks like I'm losing, but you better take a look again because I'm winning. I have a savior who died, put in a bed in a borrowed tomb because he wasn't going to need it long because he got up out of the grave. And because he got up, I can get up. So I've got the resilience. The three Hebrew boys had some resilience. 
they had a resolve and a resilience. And the resilience was this. They were throwing them in a furnace. Listen, story in the Bible. They were putting the three Hebrew boys in a furnace. This is what gets me with this testimony, Jackie. The, the, the testimony that as they were throwing them in, so you got to be careful when you start planning to do some harm to somebody else because the harm you do to them is probably going to happen to you. So the, the Bible says that the, the furnace was heated up four times greater. And those who threw them in were burnt for throwing them in. Have you ever got in trouble, my beloved, trying to hurt somebody else and you hurt yourself? You don't have to say that. You don't have to say that. You have to say that. But have you ever meant bad for somebody else and you end up getting what you thought you were going to do to them? But the three Hebrew boys had this testimony, Manny. They had this testimony that even if we're burnt up, I want you to know that God is able. I want y'all to go back and read that, my beloved, because that's amazing. That's an amazing piece. That as they were throwing him in, they said, look, O king, I want you to know something. Even if we're consumed by this fire, we want you to know something, that God is able. Let me tell you what I used to do when I was teaching. Young man in the, in the bay shirt, my baby, look, if you if you tired, sleepy kind of way, you need to just stand up and do one of these numbers. In the name of Jesus, are you hearing me? Just shake yourself. You can stand up, stand up, stand. Stand Stand. Stand on your feet. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to be with you in just a second, baby. Okay? Amen. Just stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Shake yourself. And in fact, when you're in class and you're in reading and you got to do some writing, you need to raise your hand politely and say, Miss, Miss Penelope, may I just stand up because I was up playing PlayStation all night long. Shake it fast. I'm going to look for this scripture for you right here. This one right here, 2 Corinthians 4 and 9. You got it? That big word says persecuted. Say persecuted. And look, there's a whole lot of things that try to persecute you, but you don't have to fall victim to it. Are you hearing me? I don't have to be afraid of the police because I know I belong to the, I, in fact, I'm a priest. I'm a prince. Are you hearing me? So I don't have to worry about being persecuted because I know who I am. But I'm not abandoned, persecuted in a whole lot of ways. I might not have a whole lot of money, but I'm still not abandoned because I know a God who has a cattle on a thousand hills. I'm preaching to myself. I've been struck down in some situations, not because I've been so good, but I've been struck down because sometimes I've done some bad things. But sometimes, my beloved, I'm struck down by folk, my beloved, who just want to strike you down because they're kind of jealous. Have you ever had some folk to speak bad to you? Have you ever struck yourself down because somebody hurt your feelings? But I'm not destroyed. And I have some resilience. And it's all because I've been redeemed. I've been bought with a price. Am I teaching a little bit? It's okay. Getting hot in here, ain't it? But look, watch here, watch here. I, I, have, I have this thing called a resolve. I got a made up mind. I've got some resilience. But not only do I have this resilience, but I also have some reflection. Are you ready for this? I, I need to ask the old people these things. Are you hearing me? Are y'all with me? You're all old people. If you're not six and, and, and between, well, how are you? 13? 14. 13? 13. If you're, if, you're, if you're over 13, you're old people. Listen. <laughs> Even my 15-year-old. Hey, let him go. Hey, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl. Baby girl. He'd be okay. He's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. He really is. I promise you. Sometimes we want attention, but sometimes we don't need it. In the name of Jesus. He's got more Bible in him than most of us. Are you hearing me? All right, so we're going to go for it. Either, either he's going to do what God says do, or he's going to wish he had it. Have I got a witness in here? Either he, he's going to do what God has gifted him to do, or he's going to sit down and say, boy, if I would have just could have, should have, would have. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? If I just did what God said do that night, then I would not have had 15, 16, 18, 20 years trying to figure. Has anybody done something? You said, boy, I wish I had done something different. Excuse me. I wish I had Woo! But even though you did, didn't God still bring you back to where he wants you to be? I'm preaching in here better than you're acting. So I got a resolve. I got some resilience, but then I also have some reflection. Go to Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 2. Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 2. I got some reflection. I got some reflection. Yes, sir, question. My point? I'm reading them, so you got to write them. In the beginning, I told you I have four points, but you're going to have to write them because they're not going to be on the screen. So I'm going to give them to you again. You ready? See, sometimes you got to indeed engage it and, and go to work for it because it ain't going to come out and give it to you. There's no EBT cards in here. All y'all are hearing me. Are you hearing me? Sometimes you, I wish I had half a church in here. Have I found out that sometimes you got to work for it? Sometimes you got to what for it? I can't hear y'all. Sometimes you got to do what? 
Young man, young man, if you ride on that seat, we're going to fight. Sometimes you got to do what? You got to do what? Definitely. You're not going to end up getting a 90, my beloved, and you didn't put in, you didn't put in the work. I understand the enemy got a whole trick for you. You can go to school, sit down, go to school every day, and you can leave school with a 50. Have I got a witness? They're going to give you a 50 for just coming through the door. But if you come on with a 60, you really didn't do much of anything. Have I got a witness? But if you want to get a 90, you got to put some in. Have I got a witness? If you put nothing in, you get nothing back. If you don't read to learn, are you going to learn? Nothing. That's what the baby said. And if you don't read the Bible, how are you going to engage the word of God? If you don't read the book, you're going to miss a whole lot of opportunity. You read everything else. You read some Instagram. I'm going to say it again. I didn't hear nobody say amen. You read some Instagram. You don't read Instagram. Instagram, yeah, IG. You don't read Instagram. You ain't got a snap. You do? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and there's none of this grammatically correct. Not even TikTok. You look at TikTok? Do you look at God? Oh, don't lie. You see God videos on TikTok? Do you see God right now? You don't. You do. When I look at you, I see him. When I look at you, I see God. Now, what you got to do is start filling your head. Listen. Listen, Linda. Filling your head. With the word of God, so when troubles come, you'll be able to withstand it. Got me? That's what we want you to do. Give me a second. I want you to know the first point. The first point is to, everybody tell them the first point is what? I can't hear y'all. Say it again. Resolve. Write it down. Do it the best way you can. Phonetically. Resolve. Spell it. Ah, that's okay. We got it. The second one is what? Resilience. Remember, we spelled that one out. That was your second point. Resilience. We just got off of it. Now, also put the scriptures on it because I asked Deacon Stewart. See how I'm prophetically saying that? I asked Deacon Stewart. You see how I prophetically said that? I said, I asked Deacon Stewart to put up the scripture. Sir? What's number two? What's number two? Resilience. And my third point is what? Reflection. As you reflected that you didn't get the points. What is resilience? Spell resilience again. You re- are you up now? You awake now? Are you? Oh, 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 oh. You awake now. Stand up. All right. Now spell it to my beat. All right, now, now spell it slower again for us. There it is. Did you write? You were not writing it. He was saying it, but you were not writing it. Spell it one more time. Now, so as he spells it, you write it. Are you hearing me? Got me? You got me? You ready, ready, ready? Because, see, we're all in this thing together. Are you? Am I teaching in here? This is a good church. Isn't it? This is a good church. Because, see, if I'm redeemed and I say, I believe in God. How many of y'all believe in God? How many of y'all believe that Jesus is Lord? Okay, so therefore, you really should receive him and be redeemed. And then to to, to receive and be redeemed, then there ought to be some actions that take place as a result of that, which motivates me that I got to have a resolve that I'm going to live and not die. We said that, right? I got to have that resolve. And then I got to have some some resilience. Spell it again while he spells it. This is the last time. You ready? And then you can listen, 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 listen. Right here, right here. Spell it the best way you can. Spell it the way it sounds. Got it? And then we'll correct you on the paper. Got it? Hooked on phonics works for me, but phonetics, sometimes you will spell it wrong because it could spell, you could sound one way. I got to teach. I'm an old teacher. You can sound one way, but it's spelled a different way. Have I got a witness? All right, so if I gave you a, a mnemonic sermon, can you spell mnemonic phonetically? Can you spell mnemonic phonetically and be correct? Talk to me. Am I teaching a little bit? Can you spell mnemonic and be correct? What's the first letter in mnemonic? Actually, it's not P. Is it P, y'all? We're going we're gonna to let y'all look that up, okay? Um, let me go to this one. Is what? 
We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going to do this. We're going. Okay, we're going to do this. Let's do pneumonia. Now, pneumonia is spelled with a P. Or tsunami is spelled with a T. So I can't do that phonetically. Amen? So we'll do, we'll do these others later. But y'all got me. Are you ready? We, we, this is a whole commercial. Let's go for it. So we got to have a reflection. Romans 2. Romans 2. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve, listen to me, I'm going to ask you what I'm talking about, young man, right here, right here, shake yourself, stay right here with me. I don't need you to watch me, are you hearing me? Because if you watch me, you can hear me, but if you don't watch me, you won't hear me. You feel me? So if, if, I, if I move this way, watch me, and you will hear me. But if you take your eyes off of me, it's going to be easier for you to take your brain off of me. Are you hearing me? Y'all got that one? So you, you, you look here. Thought is produced by what you hear, see, taste, smell, and feel. All right? I want you to feel what I'm saying. You feel me? You feel me? All right. Here we go. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. That's kind of tough, isn't it? Because the world wants you to do one thing. Right? Yeah, the world wants you to do some, because see, somebody come in class, come, come down the hallway and push you, and the, the crowd will say, you going to let her push you. Have y'all been in a fight in school before? Yeah. Amen. So, 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 so what happens with the world, what happens with the world with that is that some joker come down, come, crazy. I was dealing with a fight just, I didn't deal with it. The, the deans dealt with it. There was a track meet. Should I tell this principal? Should I tell? I'm going to tell it anyway. I'm about, I'm about, I'm about, I'm about, I'm about retired anyway. Listen, there was a fight at a track meet. New student. You, you, you love these new students this, this time of the year. New student. And so what had happened was this girl, other girl, you know, kind of, kind of masculine girl, going to run up on this other girl and push her. The other one's kind of masculine. You understand, you understand what I'm saying? So they get to fighting at a track meet. At a track me. Sit. It doesn't matter. They're part of humanity, the school of life, earth. Because, see, listen, to, listen to what I'm saying. Because the same scenario plays out at every school. Watch here. What color were they? No kidding. And they were girls. Because I've seen more girl fights than boy fights. It's getting cuckoo for Cocoa Pops. But here's a problem. Here's a problem. Listen. That goes along with the scripture. Just a minute. Goes along with the scripture. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. So, the girl comes and push you. Push. And then the crowd starts saying, you going to let her do that to you? You going to let her do that to you? So, the whole crowd, the fool crowd, wants you to go to fighting. Make sense? But the Bible, boom. But the Bible says, don't, don't do that no more. I need to be transformed by the renewing of my what? My mind. Does that make sense? So I got to let my mind do something different. My body wants to knock the bejesus out of her. But my mind, because my mind has been redeemed, I need to just say, I'm going to go tell Mr. Jones. Are you hearing me? Because I asked some kids real simple. I said, do you think... I can handle it. Do you think I can handle my school? Do you think I would let somebody fight in my hallway? Do you think I would let them stay there if they did that in the hallway? Do you think I would let them pick on you? No, sir, I, sure, I would not at all. And guess what? If I was your principal in the name of Jesus, I would send you home if you acted the knucklehead. Question. Well, I must say this to you, and, I, and, and this is what he said, in case you didn't hear. He said, more boys are killing each other, and usually there's a girl somewhere in the middle of it. You understand? 
Now, hand down just a second. I'm going to help you. So, but the physical fights, it's increasing. Does that make sense? And if girls start shooting like you start, like boys are shooting, because what happens, let me tell you this. Since, since how are you? are about 15, right? All right, so what happens, and some women will, will, will appreciate this and some not. Yeah, exactly. And so what happens is that oftentimes women, not all the time, reflect the men who's supposed to be in charge. And if women really start doing what you and male, male are doing, male, male people are doing, it's going to be intensified and worse. Because they're going to do it better. Do you understand? If they plan to come in and take some folk out, they're going to take out a whole lot of folk. So it is my prayer, baby girl, that you stop. An old woman told me this for, for the sake of some older people here. An old woman told me this. this, this she said this. She says, um, she says, my husband wears the pants in the house, but I lay them out. Do, do you understand? So he think. oh, I'm going to put it this way. Sisters, and you know better than I do. Oh, God, you, he's the head, but I'm the neck because he can't, it ain't turning nowhere without me. But, but, but he, here's another piece that, that, that an old, older person told me this, Brother Bell, that a man chases a woman until she catches him. He thought he was chasing her. But from the very time she saw him coming through the door and she recognized he matched his socks and he was clean and his, t and his nails were clean. She saw it when he walked through the door. She, she knew the guy had somebody. His, his hat was clean and he had some match. And then she either, I don't know what she did, but she did something. He looked and, and turned and he thought he was chasing her. Oh, Y'all understand what I'm saying, don't you? All right. Put your hand down, son. This is, for, this is for your time. It's after your time. It's for you're not there yet. Watch it. But I love the questions. But right here, sisters, are you with me? Folk want you to get into a fight, but when they get into a fight, you the one in trouble. And they they just saw, they just saw where where's my phone? They just had you on video. Make sense? You ain't putting me on video like that. No, sir. Does that make sense? So I'm not going to conform to that any longer. Are you with me? Period. Reflection. Don't conform. Have you ever conformed to the world and got yourself in trouble? And God changed your mind and got you better? Does that make sense? So we've got to change the way we think. Am I teaching? I'm going to be through in about five minutes. Lord Jesus. Five minutes. When we transform, have our minds transformed, then, guess what's going to happen? Watch your baby girl. You ready? Then, then, try to see if it's up here. Then, the T is not the bed. Then you will be able to test. And not only will you be able to test, you'll be able to approve what God's will is. Make sense? All right? His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Who made you? Should we please him? We should please him. Yes. But I can't please him unless I know his will. Make sense? Young man, you can't please God unless you know his will. That's why the Bible is clear. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long on the earth. How many of y'all want to live long? Hey, big paper, you, 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 you weigh somewhere else. You need to get your whole paper back. Are you feeling me? Get that paper back up. If you don't get nothing else, put your paper, pick, pick it back up. Pick, pick it up. Thank you. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. How many of you want to live long? I, amen. So I need to honor my father and my mother. Now, here's a piece about this. It's kind of interesting. It doesn't say honor my mother and my father if I like them. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say, honor my father, my mother, if my father does the right thing. It doesn't. You ought to honor him anyway. And sometimes, sometimes we, do the, we, do the, we do the most. 
Sometimes parents do the most. Have I got an amen? Don't sometimes we do the most? Mom and daddy didn't be doing the most. They say, we're going to do this, and they don't do it. Amen? Do we do the most? And we expect y'all to do the right thing every day. And we do. And God does. Every day. Go to class, young man. Every day. Go to school. Every day. Be respectful to your teachers. Every day. Every day. And in fact, some of you need to go home and clean up for your mama. Every day. Mm, I'm preaching better than you're acting. Listen, I'm almost through. That's reflection. If I do that, then I'll be able to prove. Prove. I'll be able to prove it. Test it and approve what God's will is. Are you hearing me? Here, here's my last Here's my last piece. My first point was, first point is what? Resolve. My second point is what? Resilience. My third point is what? Reflection. I need to reflect. I need to reflect. My last point, you can play, I promise you. God to mighty. Y'all got to pray for me. Is reliance. I want you to leave here saying you're going to rely on God. Got me? You're going to rely on God. Reliance. R-E-L-I-A-N-C-E. R-E-L-I. Got it? L-A-N-C-E. The scripture is Proverbs. Third chapter. Verses five and six. Sometimes we want to rely on money. We want to rely on the world. And I've come to find out that rely on a house because you think maybe if I get me a big old house, a nice house, I can go in and relax. But if God ain't in the house, there's no relaxing. Give me a nice car, get a new car smell. Focus on like, I like your shiny car, but that car note comes every month. And you could be driving in that car, somebody hit it. And you relying in that, on that car, and it's nothing. I, but I got to tell you, God, God got me to another level. I remember, uh, Brother Ray, I, got, I, I was on a Sunday. I think I was, headed, I was headed towards Baptist Hospital or someplace in that area. And I saw it. You know, you ever been in an accident, you saw it coming. You just saw it, and it was, it was nothing. I tried to avoid it, but I saw it coming. I saw it coming. It was kind of wet outside. And uh, this guy came and he was by, he just ran the stop sign and he hit my truck in the back. And I, it hit me pretty hard because it spun me all the way around. You got me? He spun it all the way around. Tore up, tore up the, 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 the back of the truck pretty bad. The tire was all bent over. Car spun around. And I thought I was going to, because I tried to, tried to avoid him. Brother Ford, you, you good? I'm not done yet. You just coming up here? No, sir, I'm not done yet. Not done yet. We ain't opened the doors yet. <laughs> so, he hit the truck. He spun me around. Tried to, I tried to miss. I was over. I thought maybe another car was going to come down the street. But, you know, all this stuff go through your mind at the same time. So, it spun me all the way around. And when it stopped, I didn't hit another car. Another car didn't hit me. I said, thank God. Then I started thinking about the two people that were in the car that hit the truck. And so I got out of the truck. And I looked at them and asked, are you all okay? I just need to know if y'all are fine. And some of the people that watched it, you know, I saw them. They were out kind of watching the accident. But I was happy that everybody was good. I was able to walk out. His car was demolished and my truck was, was tore up and demolished. But everybody was okay. Some was saying, like, man, hey, tore up your truck, tore up your truck. I said, but we can get another truck. I can't get another young man. He had his little girlfriend in the car with him. And it wasn't his car, it was his dad's car. And I said, your dad going to have to be appreciative that you are okay. 
they can get another car. Just a witness of that, that the material things that we put so much, so much faith in and so much hope in, our kids go crazy, Doc Brooks, over these cell phones. They go crazy over cell phones. Crazy. Parenthetically, I want to tell you, I don't allow cell phones out in my academy. If I come through and the cell phone is out, I take it. Your mama got to come get it. Off the top. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Is that what you said? I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. And that's, listen for a second. Kids, y'all hear, uh, parents, y'all hear that? But that's how we've raised our kids that this phone is like God. Does that make sense? They get up in the morning, the first thing you grab. You know what I've discovered? I think I done hit a nerve for a second. Bless you too. I bless you if you get off that cell phone. Listen. Listen. I've discovered you have a laptop? Everybody have a laptop, a school laptop, raise your hand. You have a laptop, raise your hand. Okay, good. Shh, 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 shh. Listen, listen. I've had children come to school and their phone fully charged. Listen, baby girls, shh, right here. Their phone fully charged, but their computer's dead. I said, where's your charger? I don't know, it's at the house. But they got their phone. They wake up to it, not to a prayer, not to a scripture, and sometimes not even to breakfast. But they wake up to that phone. I'm saying very simply that our reliance, not on stuff, not the cars, not the house, not the tips, not the toes. And can I say something else parenthetically? I'm loving the new hairdo, the natural puffs. I'm loving it. The poofs. Shh. Y'all missed it. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Here's the scripture. You ready? Boom. Stand up for a second. Read that for me. Yes, ma'am. Come here for a second. Yes, ma'am. Come here. Come here. This is, this is my last scripture. Read that for me. Oh, can you see it? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and Lean not on your own understanding. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That's, that's the motivating piece that if I'm not going to lean to my understanding about the clothes or the, the cars or even sometimes the pain that I have to go through. Okay. But I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God that I'm going to get through the things that sometimes seems like it besets me. Trust in the Lord with some of your heart. All your heart. Lean towards your own understanding. No? No. So it says lean not on your own understanding. So if it says not leaning towards your own understanding, why would you listen to somebody else to give you some drama? So if I run up on you and say, what's the tea? If you can't give me some scripture, then your tea ain't hot enough. Are you hearing me? All right. If I lean not to my own understandings, in all my ways, submit to who? God. Submit to him, and he will make my path straight. Got it? Did you get a word you can take with you? 